How was everyone? All good, thanks. All, All good. Good. Yeah, very good. good. Yeah, it's been really nice. It's been a really it's fun weekend. Yeah. It's been really nice to be able to chat to fans and um, kind of get amongst Comic Con and get really involved, which we haven't really, because we've always done panels and um, mm. been on like, like slight, like slight signings, like really for a really short period. It's really nice to actually all weekend be able to chat to fans and yeah, just chill all weekend mm. and oogle at all of the cosplay. <laughs> <laughs> What's been the coolest thing you've seen so far? Um, there was, I, I don't know what the character's called. Someone shouted it out I've got, downstairs. It's from Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, she was covered in yeah. shells and barnacles and you, oh. with the kind of squid yeah. face. That yeah. one. I wish I knew what it was called. I should have a video of it. I've got a video of it. Save Jones, right? Yeah. David yeah. Jones, yeah. 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 That was, <laughs> she, I, I assume that she'd made everything herself and she even down to the, the, the claw and the the long finger, it was just amazing. Mm. <laughs> oh, well, I just, well, it's, you might not watch the YouTube channel, but it's quite a popular YouTube channel now, H3H3 Productions. Um, <laughs> and they've got a, 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 a dude, I've never seen anyone do it before, and it makes such a good cosplay, but he has this like satirised character of like the, the vaporise uh, community, and he goes around with like, this big weed hat thing on, these like glasses, and he's got this like, Pants pulled up and he's one of the vaporizer, vape niche. Um, <laughs> and that, I, knowing that, having seen that on YouTube, um, and it's really like kind of obscure uh, cosplay, I absolutely love that. I was like, dude, vape niche! <laughs> and he was oh, like, that, that's what it was. Then he was right. like, vape niche, bro. He's really I good. thought he looked surprised because only one other one person yeah. <laughs> knows, yeah. knows what he is. Yeah, that was great. That's very Yeah. Uh, for me, I have to say like I like the mashups that people create, like sort of m my examples, like a, a Spider Man, no, a Captain America with like no, this woman was wearing a Spider Man. I don't know, she mashed up like Spider Man and Captain America, mm. but it looked really cool. Um, and I've seen a lot of mashups, um, so I quite like that. I think they're my favorite. There's an incredible lady who looks like she's going to a masquerade ball, she and comes she, every day she she she's been dress. here every day and wearing a corset and. And a dress with a crinoline and and um, and a hat. And there, yesterday, I, sh I presume she makes them herself. Yesterday, uh, all the material had Spider-Man all over it. <laughs> um, and the the day before, she was zombie something. But it's just, it's. I love that the creation yeah. of the superhero versus yeah, the dreaded crinoline. Someone had like a stormtrooper mask with a bathrobe and just like. Slippers and like, like, <laughs> yeah. I just think it's perfect. Um, so yeah, they're my sort of favourite cosplays. If you were cosplaying this weekend, who would you have been? Ooh. Well, I've, I, I'm going to do one day uh, Skull Kid from Majora's Mask, um, but I need to get a proper Majora's Mask, and they cost quite a lot of money. But I've always wanted to do that, always. So I will do that one day, and. Just got to put the time and the money aside to do it. It's yeah. on record now, so. <laughs> yeah, I'm really happy to have it on record because I'm going to do it. I think any Blade Runner cosplay would be awesome. Um, kind of, uh, yeah, with with the victory rolls up here and uh, doing that, or or kind of going going all mental with my with my white hair and and the the little silver face would be really cool. Yeah. I, I will do I that. I still don't promise. actually know mine. Like I keep looking and trying to take notes, but I feel like if I was when I do it, I want to do it properly. Um, so I don't want to just say anything. But you'll see me in cosplay soon. <laughs> <laughs> you see many cosplays of your characters while you've been doing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. the best. I was gonna say when you asked what our favourite cosplays we'd seen, I should have said that because um, every day I've seen um, a singular April. <laughs> So um, yeah, Friday, Saturday, and today. There's all, there's always been someone that's come up to me wearing my cosplay, which is, it's just it's mind blowing. Um, I'd seen pictures because obviously these guys have been doing more cons than I have. Um, but yeah, actually seeing it in person is totally different and uh, and very cool to know that you've um, kind of touched someone that much that they want to make the effort to to dress as your character is. Yeah, it's, it's wonderful it's to see. And so mm. This is just the, like, the ultimate honour. They put in enough yeah. time and effort and money to source all this stuff, and 
it means enough to them to do that. It's mm. really cool. Mm. You're tapping that one. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Someone just gave me a fidget cube and I'm just like, and I've got a spinner and <laughs> a bit fidgety. <laughs> what is it like being in the uh, Hooverse? Oh, that's a crazy place. <laughs> yeah, it's a crazy it's an place. Honor. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, it's a big thing for fans to welcome in uh, new additions that mm. they have no basis or founding uh, behind. Um, but there's the fan base on the on the on the whole has been wonderful and been very supportive and very loving, and we can't thank mm. them. Enough. Lots of people have reached out to us. These guys hear it more because they've got Twitter and I'm only on Instagram. Um, but I do get sent loads of fan art and um, kind of uh, people have been making their own posters for every episode and um, been doing portraits of all of us and that's been, that's been incredible. Mm. Just again, knowing how much it's really touched people, they've put in that time and effort. Um, we didn't know how the sh how it was going to be received amongst the Hooniverse. Um, we knew we had something amazing when we were making it, and um, yeah, it was it was it was a scary moment when it was it really first was, yeah. aired. Going, oh god, I hope they like us. But um, mm. yeah, it's truth be told, it's gone down well. Mm. So, uh, um, with the arc of your character. Um, it's been, it's been inc incredible art from, from the beginning to the Thank end of the you. series. And do you have any ideas of what you want to see her do next season? Um, <clears throat> there's a few things I would uh, like to see more of with April. I mean, firstly, I would like her to be in her own body, please. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like, I don't fancy being in all of that prosthetics <laughs> for no, five months. I'm sure it takes um, I don't know how doing. it would fare with April and Rum's relationship either. Yeah. Be a bit awkward. <laughs> um, <laughs> I would like to see. I mean, there's a niche for that somewhere. Yeah, I'm sure um, there is. <laughs> I would love to see more of the relationship between April and her parents. I think there's a lot more to be told between April and her father with that story. Um, and April and Ram's relationship, I mean, it's, it's on the rocks until the very last minute when he, um, he finally works out that she's going to sacrifice herself. So it's picking up those pieces, are, uh, it's going to be interesting. Mm. Yeah, no, me most, I just want to see what happened. I keep, like, imagining me holding hands with Korokinus walking down the corridor at Coe Hill. Don't work with it. <laughs> I, I'm just, yeah, no, I just want to know what happened with that. So. Amongst all these, these kids, because it starts from year seven up to sixth form, like all these kids in the lunch, lunch queue with their tray and then Korokinus just sat yeah. with a plastic blue tray getting lunch ladies to put slop on the plate. It doesn't yeah. work. I'm just really interested to see how Patrick would even, I'm sure he's got ideas, but just for closure, how he would even work around that and just make it, yeah. if he wanted to make it normal again, how it would work. Yeah. Uh, no, you I never don't. know what goes on in Patrick's <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. have you Have you had word that, yet about season two? We know as much as we know the next zilch. person, yeah. Um, I don't know, I feel good because BBC America has been so fantastically positive and enthusiastic about it and they've really pushed it and tapped into um, the young adult audiences particularly on socials and they've created a buzz so I hope so I mean they've you know they've really done it justice so um, fingers crossed but yeah we have no idea yeah mm -hmm. we, we'd give you a hint if we did but we don't unfortunately <laughs> I think we wouldn't be able to hold it together no, if we, knew, if we knew there was we were like no <laughs> if we knew. <laughs> um, yeah how do you feel to have it launch internationally um, did you, did you, some of you guys went over to, to the launch, didn't you? I yeah. don't you remember. Yeah. yeah, I didn't, but yeah, you did, did you not? You, you came did, to New you York. You came to New York. You were there. <laughs> oh, well, New York. Oh, sorry, New York. Yeah, <laughs> New York. Yeah, I thought you were talking yeah. something else. Um, no, New York was amazing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but um, yeah, having a launch elsewhere um, mm. is always very, very cool and surreal. And always having fans, like, say, Oh, I'm a fan from Germany. Please come yeah. to Germany or like from Poland or yeah. wherever. Um, it's always, it's, it's, I don't know why it's, um, it means something, but it does. It really does having people outside of my bubble. Um, because we're in these tight, we're in these studios in, in cozy Cardiff. 
Um, and, <laughs> and it's very much our own bubble and you're like, okay, this is going to go out to the UK and you don't even comprehend when we were filming it. Just It's gone out globally and it's, it, it has been BBC worldwide and it's been like Turkey, Hong Kong, Singapore, Dubai and it's just blows my mind to even say that. Yeah. Um, yeah, and we keep finding out more and more countries where it's going to. Um, the German dubbed trailer is interesting. Yeah, I'll, I'll show you the German dubbed trailer. Yeah, I've never seen my, my myself dubbed over with another language. So that was really cool. Is so weird. Yeah. Uh, you were followed, weren't you, on Twitter? Yeah, the guy who actually dubbed my voice like messaged me on Instagram saying, "Yeah, I, I dubbed you in German." I, was like, I just find that so cool because when you even just sort of like casting, I remember. When you when you got cast, we just sort of forgot about the process of like other characters having to audition and go through what we had gone through. Um, so just to know that someone else is in a studio watching our work and like dubbing our, you just completely forget about mm -hmm. that side. Um, but it's really really cool. I remember when we first got told it was going out in America in April. We was a bit skeptical, like, is this a good idea? Um, but I feel like it kind of worked in our favour. It sort of gave us another launch, um, and in America and BBC America really got behind it. So. It's, it's, it's really positive and we're just, we don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Would you like any uh, crossovers with Doctor mm. 100% well? yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's only fair. I keep yeah. like saying I, what, it would be brilliant bringing Torchwood back in yeah. via yeah. my class. Mm. I think that would be fantastic. Mm. Have some you crossovers with those two. Yeah, my, John, uh, that would be amazing. The apartment so cool. that me and Viv lived in in Cardiff um, was the building that they filmed the rooftop scene of Torchwood. Oh really? Um, yeah. So that was cool. There's too many crossovers, so mm -hmm. like an official one needs to happen. Yeah. yeah um, cool. It's not fair that Peter and his his lovely TARDIS can come into class and yeah. then and then yeah. Leave it's only right that, that we, uh, we go into Doctor Who, I think. <laughs> Maybe you could get to be a companion when there's a new doctor. That would be amazing. Yeah. That would be incredible. Give me a call, BBC. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more than happy. For all of you in the TARDIS or yeah, there's, fight. Yeah. there's an infant in matter of space. I think we'll be okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That would be awesome. As well as being part of the, the Hooniverse, the show has also been compared to Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Mm. What, what do you guys think about that? It's the awesomest news ever. Yeah. <laughs> I was a massive Buffy fan as a kid and we were watching, like, waiting weekly for the next episode. And um, when the auditions went out, when the casting call went out, they were quite secretive, so we didn't know that it was a Doctor Who show. But they did say, didn't they? They were like, it's going to be like the British Buffy. Yeah, and from that, was, that point, I was like, sign me up. Because Patrick's vision was, yeah, the, it wanted him, it, he wanted it to be the British Buffy. And mm. someone said today, um, without realising that was what Patrick had wanted, um, said, oh, it really reminded me of Buffy Vampire Slayer. And we were like, yes. <laughs> well, there you go. That's <laughs> at least uh, a little bit of success there in that, in that mm. uh, side yeah. of things. Mm. Um, yeah, it's, it's, I guess, an honour to be compared to a show of that calibre. Mm. Um, and Patrick says, and I completely agree, it's the best show ever made. Mm. Um, that's a quote from Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> what sort of uh, genre? Are you guys geeks inside yourself? Are you, are you get kind of geeking out this last couple of days? No, yeah, no, I've, I've over the... <laughs> he is uh, 100% per stamp on it. Yeah. Um, but since obviously being, <laughs> see, I can't even do that. Um, but yeah, no. Since class, honestly, even before, like, I didn't really get to appreciate like adventure and sci-fi, and it was actually class that really made me appreciate Game of Thrones as well. Because I watched Game of Thrones quite late, and I remember watching it before I couldn't really get my head stuck in all of the stories and the adventures. And even with class, I feel like had class been out before I'd been casting, I don't know if I would have watched it just because of how intricate and intelligent the storytelling is and it's just sort of like a puzzle. Because you didn't know about Doctor Who and things like that. Yeah, no, but I love the way class, like every episode is sort of like having to figure out some sort of puzzle and put pieces together and eventually it's like, okay, so this is, and I love that sort of storytelling where it's like you have to really be engaged and take in every word because if you miss a sentence, you're not going to figure out the next. And I love that about class and I love that about sci-fi and since this show, I've just like got into all of it, like Stranger Things and all of these, like, you mm. know, I really, really appreciate it now. I think I've always liked sci-fi, the sci-fi genre. I remember going to see um, Star Wars Episode One like five times in the cinema with my dad <laughs> and reg regularly had 
um, lightsaber fights across my with my in my house. We'd like turn all the lights off. And be like, Mum, sister, get out. We're busy. <laughs> we would have battles um, throughout my whole house. Um, no breakages. <laughs> no yeah. break. Well, not that I can remember. Probably, but the fights Probably were loads. too exciting. Um, yeah, so I'd, I'd always really liked Star Wars and and kind of like older sci-fi. Um, I mentioned Blade Runner, things like that. I absolutely love. Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd always liked it, but I think that being in a sci-fi genre show, like Fadi said, it makes you appreciate it more. So and also, I want to get on the fans level and be able to talk mm. excitedly about about sci-fi and be like, yeah, I know that, or like you know, recognise their t-shirts or their cosplay. So I find um, Doctor Who fans in that sense so amazing. Like I've had conversations with them, and they'll tell you exactly what road a certain scene happened on and what time, and I'm just <laughs> like, yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I love that about Doctor Who fans, and it's just it's just really cool. Well, I'll, as as you could tell, I'm a big geek. Um, <laughs> no, I, oh god, I uh, just a little bit. Um, You've I've, been to a Comic Con before, haven't you? No, oh, yeah, I've been coming to London Comic Con since about since I was about eighteen. Um, so about six years now, um, and it was always a dream of mine, knowing that I was going into acting, that I'd be invited to something like this and to be on the other side of the table so getting to do that this year has been literally a dream come true because oh, it's just so wonderful I can completely appreciate where the fans are because I'm, I'm, I'm that fan I'm <laughs> still going oh my god I can't believe I'm here um, the culture the atmosphere everything I have my own YouTube channel plug 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 <laughs> oh yeah he has a gaming channel yeah, yeah that shows you that, that I'm that level of geek like, at I'm euphoric euphoric uh, come back and Oh yes, I do need to play some more Hearthstone. I mean, I play it all the time in spare time, but I need to do some more on stream on Switch. Um, yes, that will give you an insight to. That's only a little bit of my geekdom. Um, I'm. That's all I do, literally. Just a small fraction. Yeah, I could. You just, built a laptop. Well, well yeah, yeah, but I built my PC. But that's not that impressive. Yeah. <laughs> it really isn't. It really isn't. Really? No, it's not. It's not. It's just, I think it's quite a feat. <laughs> it just takes. Go on YouTube, look it up. That's all I did. I taught myself. <laughs> okay. The old Ask Uncle Google. Yes. That's it. That's all it is. Whenever your family comes around and is like, Greg, you're pretty good with tech. I'm like, no, I can just Google stuff. <laughs> yeah. Shh, don't tell everybody. <laughs> 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 can we make this the last question, please? And that is, what's um, so, Okay, so... so um, given, as you say, you're, you're a big geek and you're, you guys are, are at the Comic Con, um, who else have you been quite excited to see? Because there's quite a lot of you know, classic mm -hmm. kind of stars here this time. I had a bit of a, I had a bit of a fangirl moment meeting uh, meeting the original Hulk. She's <laughs> yeah. in the green room. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was, that was very cool. Um, I remember seeing it as a kid, and then also I think because he's such a, a legend, and me meeting Flash. <laughs> as well, yeah, it was cool. so cool. Um, I'm desperate to see Catherine Tate, yes. and I, I was excited for Billy Piper because um, you guys have been lucky enough. Yeah, to meet that her. would have been my one, Billy Piper, seeing her. Because we walked over at Birmingham when we saw her. We walked over to her and we were kind of like, uh, we're, we're, like we're a bit in your world. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> we're, we're slightly like part of the universe. Can you say hello to us, please? And she was like, oh, bow okay. down. <laughs> she, yeah. you know, she's actually friends with. Um, Wayne. Wayne. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Wayne Yip, the director, I'm assuming, as well. Yeah, yeah episode, episode six, six yeah. and seven. Yeah. 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 Class. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Very well. Awesome. Thanks very much, folks. Thank, Thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you, guys.